Okay, uh, in the middle there with the scarf around your shoulder. Uh, Fiona Wayne, Environment Business Australia. There's a couple of points I'd like to make. First of all, there's a subliminal messaging in this film that, that organisations like NASA are involved in this swindle. Um, and I'd like to read to you a line from James Hansen's recent report, which says, Greenhouse gas emissions place the Earth perilously close to dramatic climate change that could run out of control. Only intense simultaneous efforts to slow CO2 emissions and reduce non-CO2 forcings can keep climate within or near the range of the past million years. Now, to answer Mike Duffy's point, yes, there is a whole new industry that is developing. It's called the clean tech industry, the clean energy industry. And it's backed by $41 trillion of funds under management from the Carbon Disclosure Pro Project. Companies who really want to see commercial activity not beating the earth into submission, not creating waste and pollution, but making money by doing good. And this can also bring poverty levels... Um, reduce poverty levels in developing countries by providing people with clean energy. Um, and yes, clean coal is one step forward. Okay. But we've got things like solar thermal energy. Spain's just opened a plant. Nevada took 15 months to get their first solar thermal plant up and running. We can do the same time and time and time again. OK, I, I'll take that as a statement and we'll move on. There's a, another person down the front here with his hand up. We'll go down to the front. We haven't been down there yet. Uh, the gentleman with the hat. Ah. Yeah. All right, um, I'm a... So I study economics, physical economics and astrophysics and also classical music under Lyndon LaRouche. And the question I would like to have with the so-called scientist on the panel is 400 years ago, Johannes Kepler, the man that discovered universal gravity, actually refuted the method of the IPCC report of statistical analysis as being like Plato's cave of seeing the shadows on the wall and now you've got you know, Tony doing the happy dance in front of the, uh, you know, the fire being reality, but these are just looking at the statistics of what they're seeing, empirically seeing, and that's, that's true for them. Now, Johannes Kepler actually proved that the previous models before that as actually being incorrect in the sense of method-wise. Now, this has been a general trend for 30 years since okay, the boom of drug listen, sex uh, rock and roll. I think, uh, I'm sorry, so what's, what's your com comment on that, the two... Well, uh, the geologist and the IPCC. I, I, have a feel, I have a feeling that's a slightly obscure uh, point to be making here. Well, and, well uh, method I'm, is very important. I, I, I understood. Maybe we can carry it on It's the crux later. of it. This gentleman up here who has his hand up in the third from the last uh, row. Why won't they answer it? I, I have a, a point on, on the environmental movement in general, a question for any of the environmentalists so-called in, in the panel there. Uh, Prince Philip was one of the key founders of the Green Movement. He said that if he were to be reincarnated, he'd want to be reincarnated into a deadly virus to solve the overpopulation problem. <laughs> well, the point is that the Green Movement was founded by those in the eugenics movement. This is Hitler, Nazi, race science, and this will destroy Africa. Can, can anyone make a comment? Uh, look, I, think, I think we'll just leave that as a statement if we can. Uh, and can we actually go to this gentleman down here in the middle? I don't think I've got anything nearly as outrageous to say. <laughs> I'd really just like to follow on from what David was saying. My name is Chris Tierney. I'm a paleoclimatologist at the University of Wollongong. And, and one of the things that we can do is we can learn from the past of what might happen in the future. Now, if we took a time capsule and went back to Greenland 130,000 years ago, the summers there were a lot warmer just because of the way the Earth was rotating, orbiting around the sun and the greenhouse gases. It's five degrees centigrade warmer, and a large part of Greenland and the Antarctic ice melted. Now, that led to a sea level rise of four to six metres. Now, that's a global issue. It's not just temperature. There's a lot of people, millions of people, living in low-lying regions, particularly in the developing world. There's some hell of an expensive real estate up and down this coastline, and it's something else that maybe we need to actually think about. We'll take that as a statement as well. Thank you very much. And we'll move down to the second from the front here, the gentleman with the glasses. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'd just like to follow up on that point. Um, as a concerned citizen, the, the argument about whether it's anthropogenic or non-anthropogenic really doesn't affect me. What I'm interested in is the risk management plan that governments are going to have <coughs> to fix up the problem of higher sea levels and, you know, um, refugees and people moving between countries and wars and those sort of things. So I'm really concerned about that. I think, when, you know, Rome's burning and we're, we're seeing some people fiddling around here. <laughs> There's a lady just behind you with a hand up. Thank you. Um, is it Greg Byrne on the, on the end, CEO of World Wildlife Fund? Um, I just find it interesting, you know, this, this issue of, um, 
you know, people being the problem. And I'm just wondering, two quick questions. Um, you is, only have time for one very well, quick one because we're nearly out of time. Is the world overpopulated, Greg? The world is going from 6.5 billion to 9 billion. It'll probably return be it below that. The key thing we have to manage is our burning of fossil fuels and we have to slow things down. And we can do it very, very well by stimulating a sustainable economy with a lot of the clean tech and help a lot of people out of poverty. And that is wonderful. So more people is a good thing? More people is a good thing? Yes, your point, not mine. Mm -hmm. OK, so. I'm, so, I'm sorry to wind you up, and I'm sorry that uh, all of you didn't get a chance. Uh, there will be other opportunities uh, on the internet. So a big thank you uh, to our panel. Um, if you'd give them a round of applause. I... <laughs> They'd appreciate it. OK. And to our studio audience, thank you very much. But I'm absolutely sure that we could keep this going into the wee small hours and beyond. However, this is where we'll have to end the television component. But if you'd like to continue the discussion online, you can actually go to a special website, abc.net.au slash swindle and follow the links to the forum. Also online to answer your questions and respond to your comments will be two of tonight's global warming warriors, David Caroli and Bob Carter, and they'll be logged in very soon. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's program. I'll be back in the late line chair, rather thankfully, on Monday. Until then, good night and stay warm.